Hi, everybody. Today, we've got John Mattis with Morrison Healthcare, part of Compass One, and he's system director and project lead for the new Fresh Food Robots program at Mayo Clinic Hospital, St. Mary's campus in Rochester, Minnesota. Thank you for being on the show, John. Thank you very much for inviting me today. So I um, first want to ask, how was the decision made that um, the folks at the hospital wanted to embark on this robots program? Well, I think a couple different things. So we were looking at it, um, I would say early on, um, kind of the end of last year. So we actually did a, a test and a pilot. So really more of the um, technology part of it. So that was one of the biggest pieces. So how can we uh, utilize technology? Um, that's kind of the way everything's going. And then how can we also offer some opportunities for um, some of our staff that are working on site for some 24 hour meal options? And this with some fresh food options for them and to have a 24 hour option and have the technology behind it all um, started to be a, um, a good conversation at the end of 2019. And with you know, COVID-19, unfortunately, um, this created an excellent opportunity for us to now look at the machine and help us with social distancing as well. So St. Mary's campus is uh, very large and not everybody can all come to the cafe. So uh, based on the number of people that we have. So this gives us an opportunity to actually move the machine into a building where there may be a number of individuals that now can just go down um, and get a fresh salad and then go back to their, their unit, their break room. So it really helps with social distancing as well. Oh yeah, definitely. I think the pandemic kind of uh, forced people to fast forward on things like this, like delivery robots, or even just something like mobile delivery apps, things like that, where it was like, hey, this is a good idea. And we thought maybe it was sort of like more, this is just for millennials. They like to order, they like to be on their phones, but it's like, no, this is really like helpful for everyone. And it's, it's a, I think it really sort of fast forwarded. So I always talk about like silver linings if, if you can. So that's, that's one thing. Yeah, one of the things that it's a popular station or popular item is the salad bars. So mm. we can't do a salad bar anymore. So now this gives us that next best option for a salad bar um, that's very safe. Um, and, you know, you can pick the salad that you want, you know, and it's served to you. Right, right. Yeah, that was one of the first things that people in food service were kind of reacting to was just like, what about salad bars? Because that was so, and customization is such a big deal to customers and everything. So I've seen a little bit, I've seen different, I've seen a milkshake making robot. I think I've seen a little bit of the salad making robots in action before, but I wonder if you could sort of like visually describe to us like what the experience is going to be like. What what does the, the robot look like and how does it work? So uh, the robot will have a computer screen. So it's a fairly decent sized computer screen. Uh, it's touch screen where you're able to um, do your selection so you're going to have some featured salads and then you're also going to be able to kind of create your own if you will so um, there might be some ingredients that you don't care for um, so this way it will give you that that option um, to do that and then just to the right of the screen you will actually see um, the rotation of the fresh foods as it's getting ready to dispense the product so now you actually get to see the fresh foods in the machine mm -hmm. um, and then there's a, the dispensing unit if you will so um, as a customer, once you're selecting your salad, you do have to um, put your bowl in place. Mm -hmm. um, and then the way we have things set up now, we've got hand sanitizer there now, we got some gloves there. And with the, with the bowls, the front of the machine actually has doors on it, so it actually keeps our bowls and lids um, secure. And mm -hmm. then all the foods in the machine, food safe. So then um, there's no tamper or any of that kind of stuff that, that happens. Mm -hmm. So everything is prepared fresh. Um, put in the machines in these cylinders, and then the cylinders then will dispense. And then it's going to create the salad that you want, and then uh, then you're on your way. So right now it's set up for a credit card option only, mm -hmm. um, and that's the way we have it now. And hopefully in the future with our partnership um, with Chobotics, we're going to end up uh, maybe doing um, some payroll deduct, which could be a could be an option since we will not be doing cash. Okay. Yeah, it seems like it, this is this is convenient. And you mentioned I was going to ask about because when you said touch screen, I was like, oh no, people will be touching it. But is is that something that they can sort of like self sanitize before each time, or like if you use hand sanitizer before and then you go? Yeah, so we do have the hand sanitizer machine there, but then I actually have a staff um, member um, that makes 
takes frequent rounds. So then we'll still do our um, okay. our disinfectant wipe downs and that with the machine. So always trying to stay on top of yep. um, that the, the health part of it. So that right. part of it goes well. The other thing that's nice with the machine from a technology standpoint is um, we will actually get um, email alerts. So if there's something from a product standpoint that um, is low or out, we're going to actually get an email alert. So you don't have to have somebody always run into the machine all the time, depending on where you it. have it placed okay. to check yeah. it. So it will actually tell you. And if like That's one of our ingredients, which is the most used, like the romaine, mm -hmm. some of them um, you're using two or three cylinders. So then you don't have to go right away because you do have a couple more that are that are there with that product. That makes sense. And then is it up to um, the the chef, the, the culinary team in each account to sort of decide what are these choices of toppings going to be? And can they change those out periodically? So right now we're using uh, the ones that have been uh, tried and true with um, the in ingredients that they suggest. So I think one of the things is we're learning with the machine because it's just, you know, it's our first weekend. Yeah. Um, some of the, the pre-cut um, type carrots that you may buy from our local um, mm -hmm. uh, company is better than our processed ones just because of the way that they come out. Um, so it's learning some of those things from an ingredient standpoint. Um, and it's been out there enough for then the partnership with Chobotics, they can kind of walk us through some of those ingredients and what are best practices. Right now, what is like the kind of um, pod that you have that's the tried and true salad? What are, what are some of the examples of toppings that come on that? Um, so uh, right now we're doing a Caesar. Um, I don't remember what the second one is. The Everybody third one is Caesar, almost though. like a Fiesta salad, which actually has a, a pico made with a corn salsa. Nice. Um, and chicken so it's uh, yeah. yeah those are probably two of the most popular items that we're doing right now that sounds really good those are definitely like would be appealing I would think to a very wide audience so that makes sense as far as prep work is there there's got to be um, a cook in the back that's doing some slicing and dicing before it goes into the cylinders right yeah so a combination of each so we'll, we'll have somebody that will actually do some of the hand prep uh, there's a couple things that we're actually going to buy already pre-prepped. Um, so between a combination of the two, and then that same person is also the um, same person that we're using that's actually going to own the machine. So mm -hmm. when they're there, they actually um, know how to pull the, the machine apart, um, how to unlock it, how to go through the product, how to change out the cylinders, mm -hmm. and then working with... Um, with their teammates then on the cleaning and sanitizing part of it as well so there's a process for that on how to how to dismantle them clean them uh, and sanitize them correctly and then uh, um, restage them again with uh, with fresh foods i'm just picturing like taking apart this robot and then you're like oh how do you put it back together now crap <laughs> so the, the, um they're actually pretty pretty simple actually the way uh -huh. they built them um so they actually work pretty well so once That's you open cool. the machine out um, kind of pull them from the carriage. Um, they're pretty easy to pull apart. Nice, nice. Now, do you think this is something, because it seems to me that it would appeal to other hospitals, because there often are like just areas of the hospital where there's people there late at night, there's no one, there's, there's nurses stations where nobody gets to them, they're really far away. So do you think that um, Morrison might want to look at doing this at more places, like eventually? Um, so I think just um, within um, our, cu our current uh, building, there could be an opportunity where we might um, look at um, doing a few more. Um, okay. So after meeting with a couple customers that have gone through, the distance is too far right now. So we're actually launching our second one. So we actually bought two machines and mm -hmm. our second one's going to go in place, which will be on the opposite side of the campus. So this will give us another another opportunity but um just because of the size it, it may work uh, uh it may work to the benefit to have more uh, mm -hmm. we'll just have to monitor that after we get our second location in um the other thing you can do for a smaller location um that could be your salad bar replacement so mm -hmm. you actually could set it up um to where you could actually put it in your actual retail space okay and it could be used that way um so they can either cool. um, do Right, so you can either do the credit card option and pay there, or if it's in a cafe setting, you might already have your own point of sale service. Right. So you can actually shut off the credit card machine. It will make okay. the salad, and then you can still have somebody go through the point of sale. So if they want to bundle it with a beverage or something else, they have that opportunity to do that. 
That sounds like a pretty good option. I think a lot of people might be interested in something, especially like as a replacement for like that footprint of a salad bar in many different cafes or whatever. There may be something there. And I think you said there may be an option for yogurt later with the same thing, like a parfait, like a breakfast type thing. Yep, that's correct. So that'll probably be our next step. So once we uh, get good at the salads, um, we'll see where the uh, where our customer base is. We'll probably try a couple of the, of the yogurts that have already been um, kind of set aside from a recipe standpoint and then try to make that work as well. So. That's a good idea because that would help with food waste too if you're just if you're putting in these cel cylinders. So and then would there be like granola on there and maybe fresh fruit or something like that? Yeah, correct. Granola, fresh fruit, yogurt. Yeah. And then again, just working with the the products that actually work. So mm -hmm. when they're um, when they're when they're working through the wheel, if you will, um, you just have to have products that are going to be able to to take that, not get crushed, not get you know, not get it right. to stick, that kind of thing. So right, right. So since you've you've been doing this for one week or two. So or one week, we're going week? into our second week right now. So okay. we're about yeah. eight or nine days in so far. Yeah. So what was you like? Is there a learning curve with customers, and how are you educating them about like, hey, this is your new robot helper. So how how do they know? How are they learning about it? Uh, so the in the one building that we launched it, so we did it as a soft launch. It gave us an opportunity to train our team, uh, let them get up to speed with the team, uh, not get overwhelmed in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, so what we did was we um, actually went nurse unit to nurse unit, oh, okay. um, and then uh, just let them know that it was available. Mm -hmm. And then, believe it or not, the first couple of days, we ended up uh, selling 14 salads on each day. So nice. um, for us, it was successful. It gave us that opportunity to do that trial run. Um, and now we got to the point, I think yesterday's sales were 19. And yesterday was the first day that we actually uh, sent out a, a kind of a global email mm -hmm. advertisement to kind of say that, you know, it, it's ready to go. So I've already talked to a couple, couple, couple customers today. Um, just when I'm rounding to see how things are going and they seem to be enjoying it and then they're kind of helping us with word of mouth too. So that's cool. That's cool. Do you feel like people are kind of interested in it because it's robots? Like it's something new and different. It's like, oh, let's, let's try this. Like, is there, is there like a novelty that's kind of fun associated with it? Well, I think the combination of each. So we actually yeah. did a trial with it um, back in November mm -hmm. and just kind of that awe factor of uh, what the machine will actually do for you. Right, then, right, right. And then wherever you wherever you put it, I mean, you have that technology at your fingertips and and close to your your area or your work unit. So I think that part of it's right. nice as well. So you hit a couple buttons, and all of a sudden, this great fresh salad comes out. Yeah, very cool. And I think I mean, it obviously requires some human component. So I think for for those who are worried about like robots, you know, like taking over or taking our jobs, it's like there's some somebody still has to make the robot go. I think right. Right. So our team still has to own it. So yeah. again, like you said, with the, the fresh foods prep, uh, making sure that we're keeping the machine uh, yeah. clean, yeah. food safe environment. Mm -hmm. um, it's just kind of a different, different way to do it. But yeah. It, yeah. And like with the way, unfortunately, that we need things to be so contact free now, it's like, this is, this is perfect, I think. Yep. And then like the email alerts, all of our sales. So we're able to, we have a dashboard that will do sales. Um, also from oh, a temperature cool. standpoint. So if we leave the door open too long, it's going to start chiming. If something did happen to the machine, it starts getting out of temperature range. We're getting a notification right, right. away. Um, so that all that technology is is there and fantastic. That's very cool. I love the connectivity of it all for sure. Well, this sounds like just something that we are going to be keeping an eye on. So good luck with the rest of it. And, and we're going to find out, we're going to keep up with you and, and see what happens with the robots. So John, thank you so much for being on our show today. All right, thank you.